In this video, we deepen our understanding of adiabatic gas expansions by deriving a relationship between the initial temperature and volume and the final temperature and volume of that gas. Okay, in the last video, we have seen the foundations for adiabatic gas, gas expansions, and we have defined them as uh, processes in which there's no energy transfer as heat. Following along, we've been able to uh, derive a relationship between the work that the gas is doing in the expansion and uh, the internal energy uh, change, um, which uh, emerges because the gas is losing energy uh, as it expands. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is then to use this expression to see if we can find a useful relationship between the initial temperature and volume and final temperature and volume. Okay, the first thing that we do is we take that, uh, uh, that equation and uh, uh, write in differential form. Okay, so we can say that uh, CV differential of T is going to be equal to the differential of work adiabatic, but uh, this is expansion, so um, the root definition for work in any expansion is just the minus external pressure differential of V. Okay, so uh, now when we actually have uh, uh, come up with a way to break down this adiabatic expansion into two processes, uh, reversible isothermal expansion and a cooling at constant volume, uh, I, they are, our approximation has been that, uh, or, or our choice has been that those processes would be reversible, right? So if that expansion, which is isothermal, is reversible, then we can actually convenient, uh, conveniently replace that uh, external pressure by the pressure of the gas, because in reversible isothermal expansions, there's always a mechanical equilibrium between uh, the system and the surroundings. So that is the pressure of the gas, which is the same thing as uh, NRT, over V, differential V, if this is an ideal gas, and that is an approximation of this work. Okay, so uh, this is gonna set up a nice integration that uh, we can uh, try to see by consolidating variables here, right? So um, let's get the temperature in the left-hand side, and then let's get the volumes in the right-hand side. Differential of V over V. Okay, so uh, we're ready to integrate here and uh, the integration values are going to be from T1 to T2 and uh, from V1 to V2. Okay, uh, we're going to assume that this heat capacity at constant volume is constant uh, and then of course the number of moles is constant and R is constant so all these works have to be uh, C sub V natural log of T2 over T1 is equal to minus NR natural log of V2 over V1. Okay, so you can see how we're starting to work at a relationship between temperatures and volumes uh, in the initial and final steps of the expansion. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is just uh, divide uh, both sets of equation by N, uh, which we have right here. But of course, that is the heat capacity per mole, so that is the molar heat capacity, so CVM. And then we can divide both sets of expression by R uh, by simply doing this. Okay, great, and uh, one ma more manipulation is that we can uh, change the sign uh, of that logarithm if we uh, reverse the numerator and denominator, V1 over V2. Okay, so all of the negative signs are gone and, and uh, this will be useful. Now, um, this constant that you have right here, uh, that's a constant, and we can just call it, uh, define it as a new constant, uh, maybe we're going to call it C. Right, so when you do that, uh, that expression is going to be C natural log of T2 over T1 is equal to the natural log of V1 over V2. Okay, using the properties of the logarithms, we can bring in this constant inside the logarithm, okay, uh, to write, I'm going to do it right here, natural log of T2 over T1 to the power of C is equal to V1 over V2, ah, natural log of V1 over V2. Okay, so the, uh, the natural logs uh, uh, cancel here, and you can then do T2 over T1 to the power of C uh, is equal to V1 over V2, and this finally uh, lets us come with a final expression, which is fairly straightforward. Okay, and that final expression is um, V1, T1, 
to the C uh, is equal to V2 T2 to the C, where C is just a ratio of the uh, heat capacity at constant volume per mole divided over R. Okay? So that is the relationship between uh, volumes, initial volumes I mean, and temperatures, and final volumes and temperatures in an adiabatic gas expansion. Now, uh, in the next video, we're going to see a similar expression that emerges when you try to analyze the relationship between the initial pressures and volumes and final pressures and volumes.